Okay, so we're doing two things with number five here. We're trying to find all of our relative extrema. Okay, that means maxes and minimums. Uh, and then we're going to identify for what parts of the domain we are increasing, for what parts of the domain is the function decreasing. Now, number five is a fourth degree polynomial. So recalling to what we did yesterday, um, how many maxes or mins possible are there? What's the maximum number possible? Three. Okay, it's one less than your degree is the maximum number of, of maximums and minimums. It's not a quadratic, okay? It's a higher degree, so that means we're going to have to graph it. There is nothing else for us to do at this level. Now, for those of you who take calculus with me, you will find out um, we're actually working on that right now. Uh, and calculus is, well, how can we find these without a calculator? Calculus allows you to do that. Just a little preview if anyone's interested. Uh, but with our resources, all we can do is graph it and then use the power of the calculator to help us figure this out. So we can see that we do have three extrema here. We have a minimum. Okay, here it looks like it's between negative one and negative two. It looks like we've got a maximum around zero and then it looks like we have another minimum around one. But I can't say that for certain until I go to uh, my calculate menu, second trace. I'm going to start, I always start on the left. Okay, so the one on the left was a minimum. It wants the left bound, so your cursor needs to be on the left side of that minimum. Uh, now, you can get closer or you can go somewhere where it's more safe. Okay, I think this is a more safe spot. That one down there looked a little too close. I'd uh, be afraid that I wasn't truly on the left side because the calculator for maximums and minimums, unlike with uh, the intercepts or the intersection of a function, um, if you don't get the bounds right, it won't give you an error message. It will just give you the maximum or minimum value on whatever interval you gave it, um, whether there's actual, uh, whether there's actually a valley or a peak in that interval, it's going to give you the maximum or minimum value uh, on what you selected. So then right down, you've got to move your cursor to the right side of that valley. Uh, I usually don't move it for the guess. I just press enter again, and then it gives me my minimum value. Okay, we have a minimum, and we're going to have minimums, so I'm, I'm going to uh, leave space. Usually round to three decimal places just for precision here. So negative 1.656 is the x. The y is negative 2.248. So that is one minimum. We've got another one, but between that we have a maximum. So I'm going to go back to my calculate menu, and I'm going to go to maximum. I'm going to move my cursor a little bit, get closer to that maximum point there, that peak in my graph, left bound, right bound, guess the maximum. Now, pay attention to this number right here. Okay, when I was identifying it by inspection, I said it looks like it's at zero for the x value. Now, it doesn't straight out give me zero, but notice it has that e negative 6 thing. That's that scientific notation. Anytime it has an E with a negative number that's pretty large, I know 6 is not really that large, but when you're talking about scientific notation and putting five zeros in front of a number, um, we're going to go ahead and call that 0. Okay, we're going to go ahead and call that 0. So we do have a maximum at the point 0, 3, and if you look at your function, when you plug in 0 for X, what's your Y value? Three. Okay, so that's another way to confirm that that is indeed the point zero three. That's just a, a, a shortcoming of our calculator that it doesn't give us exactly three there. Okay, um, <clears throat> I don't know if I had gotten a little bit closer with my bounds, if maybe it would have given me three or zero. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, and then we've got one more though. We've got a minimum on the right side, so we need to calculate one more minimum. And move my cursor just a little bit. And 
And our other minimum occurs at 0 0.906, 1 0.955. Okay, so those are my three extrema. <clears throat> Those are my three extrema. Now, I didn't just want to identify the extrema. I wanted to tell on what intervals is my function increasing and decreasing. So when we start at the left, okay, when we start over here, what are our y values doing? Decreasing. Okay, as we move from left to right, this first portion of the graph, the y values are decreasing. So for the x values, Starting as far to the left as we possibly can, that would be negative infinity, until we get to this first minimum, which occurs at negative 1.656, our function is decreasing. Okay? So again, I'm going to emphasize, we are talking about the y values decreasing, but we identify the interval using x values. Okay? So the y values are decreasing, but we identify the interval using x values. And trust me, I'm emphasizing this for a reason, because every, every year we struggle to remember that I'm supposed to use the x values to identify these intervals, even though I'm talking about what my y values are doing. Okay? So once we hit that minimum, our function begins increasing, and it increases until we get to our maximum point. So our function is increasing from where we just were, negative 1.656, until we get to x equals 0, where we hit our maximum value of 3. And then it starts decreasing again from 0 until we hit that other minimum. We don't have to go very far for that. That other minimum occurs at 0 0.906. And then from there, for the rest of the function, it's increasing. So our final increasing interval is from 0 0.906 to positive infinity. Okay. So we have two intervals on which our function is decreasing, and we have two intervals for which it is increasing. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, so those are with our polynomials. <clears throat> we have how many other different types of functions on here? We've got polynomials, we have rational functions, we have radical functions, and we have exponential and logarithmic. Okay, so let's look at uh, how we deal with those. <clears throat> Rational functions. Let's look at number 20. Okay, we should be getting familiar with these functions because we keep on using the same ones over and over again. Okay, let's look at number 20. Um, I'm going to go straight to the graph. Okay, um, so be careful when you put this in. Don't forget, put the numerator in parentheses, put the denominator in parentheses, because if you don't, it is not going to graph the correct function. Okay? It will not graph the correct function if you do not get the entire numerator in parentheses and the entire denominator in parentheses. Okay, so when we graph it here, it looks a little weird on here uh, just because of the details, but if we start on the left side of the graph, um, we just have this curve that's always increasing. Okay, So that means if it's always increasing, that means we don't have a maximum or a minimum on that interval. Okay, In the middle here, we have this almost parabola looking piece, so that there's going to be a maximum there in, on the middle curve. And then if we look at our curve on the right, it starts by decreasing, and then it starts increasing again. So then we're going to have a minimum over there. Okay, so let's calculate these values. Uh, we have a maximum in the middle piece. 
So let me make sure that I get far enough to the left and far enough to the right to ensure that um, <clears throat> I get the, the actual maximum in there. So we have a relative maximum at negative 0.482. Yes? Um, then we have a minimum over here. Bless you. Now let me remind you of kind of a shortcut. Uh, instead of having to click your cursor until it gets over there, remember we can type in values. So it looks like the minimum is somewhere on this interval right here. Well, I think it's a safe bet if I put in 3, okay, if I put in x equals 3, that's to the left of that minimum value. Seven should be a safe bet for the right bound. And then you press enter. Okay, and here's our minimum value on that interval. We have a minimum at 4.724, 2.851. Okay, yes. With rational functions, you have to include a detail about the domain as well with the increasing and decreasing units. Okay, so we're going to start on the left like we always do. Okay, so um, all the way on the left side of this function, okay, until we get to where was our vertical asymptote right here? Let me, let me get where, where was the vertical asymptote for this function, number 20? Where do we have vertical asymptote? What did we have to exclude from the domain? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have vertical asymptote for this one at negative 2 and at positive 2. So our function until we get to x equals negative 2 is doing what? It is increasing, correct? So we have increasing from negative infinity until negative 2. We cannot say that our function is either increasing nor decreasing at negative 2 because it's not a part of our domain. Okay, so then to the, just to the right of negative 2, what does our function start doing again? And I know it's kind of hard to see on this one, but if you ever run into, I, I tried to give some that were more clear cut on the problems that I give you later, but if you're not quite sure what's happening in the graph right there, okay, over here at like negative 2, then zoom in right there, okay? <clears throat> zoom in uh, and see if your calculator will produce some more uh, detail, okay? I'm not quite sure what's happening around here, so I'm going to move my cursor right there and I'm going to zoom in, okay? Now I can see a little bit more of my graph. Okay, see how it threw in some more detail there? Now remember, this vertical line right there is not there. That's the vertical asymptote. Okay, so what is my function doing just to the right of negative 2? Is it increasing or decreasing? It's increasing. Okay, it, it's way down here, and then it's coming up. The y values are increasing because then we get a maximum. Maximums occur when you change from increasing to decreasing. So we are still increasing from negative 2 until our maximum point occurs at negative 0.482. And then our function starts decreasing. It is decreasing from that maximum. of the graph. Let me sketch the graph right here. We've got vertical asymptote at negative 2, positive 2. Here's what is happening. <clears throat> I don't know what that last piece. 
piece look like? 